everyone. Hope you are good and be happy always. Once again, welcome to Shachi's Academy. And today we will discuss Chapter Six for Indian Economic Development for Class Twelve CBSC and CRT. India is a nation where large number of people reside in rural areas, and that's why it is at most important for every government of India comes in power to take care of rural development. So to discuss rural development, let us start with the topic highlights. This chapter focuses on rural development in terms of economic growth of rural areas by eradicating the lingering and emerging challenges to attain economic growth of India. So we will discuss the long term challenges and the emerging challenges of rural development and how they can be eradicated and how they can be combated. We will discuss in that. Need for rural development. Economic growth should be balanced with both agricultural and industrial growth as happened in other countries. See, in India what is happening? We are growing very fastly. India has become the fifth, fifth largest economy of the world but still its rural areas are lagging behind. Only the urban areas or the cities or the towns are developing. So it is unbalanced growth. But in other nations what happens? Rural areas or agricultural uh, sector also grows with your industrial sector. So we need to take care of rural sector if India needs to grow in real essence of the term. So we have to develop our rural areas. The Indian reforms have neglected agricultural sector and just focused on industrial development. When India started its new economic policy, then it neglected agricultural sector. Only industries were taken care of and development of industries happened, but agricultural sector lagged behind. So this led to unbalanced growth in your economy. Now we need to take care of our agricultural sector and with that we will take care of our rural sector also. Agricultural sector is largely neglected and its growth is as low as 2% against overall 7-8% to growth of Indian economy. You might have read in newspapers or heard in uh, your news, online news that growth of economy is 7-8% to but no one speaks about the growth rate of agricultural sector. It is only 2%. So you can see the difference. There is a huge difference in growth rate of agricultural and industrial sector in India. It has led to gigantic rural urban divide. This is gigantic or not? A margin of 5-6% to of growth rate is very huge. And that's why rural areas are still undeveloped or underdeveloped in India and cities are developing at a very fast pace in India. Agricultural sector has become a stumbling block in economic growth of India. See what happens if in your family one person has become a scientist and went to NASA and he is earning a huge amount of money but another brother, uh, another person is just living hand to mouth. So what will happen? You will have to help that brother of yours or family member of yours. That means you can't grow fully. Your family will always be lagging behind in economic status. So what should be done? Both of the family members or all the family members should grow at equal rate. This exactly holds true for your India also. Its agricultural sector and industrial sector should grow uh, alongside. They should equally grow. Otherwise, agriculture will remain a stumbling block. That means a hurdle in economic development, overall development of India. Done. Meaning of rural development. Rural development means an action plan. For the social and economic growth of the rural, the action plan is to focus on the lingering and emerging challenges in rural areas. So it is a plan, it is a short term plan and along with the long term strategy that should be adopted for eradicating the challenges of rural development and attaining rural development. Lingering or emerging challenges and emerging challenges. What are lingering? That means long term challenges that we have been facing since our independence. What are the challenges of rural credit? People in rural areas do not have adequate source of credit. They can't find money for their development, for their personal needs or setting up any business enterprise or for improvement on their fields. So they have lack of money or credit in their uh, economy. The challenge of rural marketing. Suppose if they develop their agriculture, they have grown a good farm and they produce is very good. They have a very good yield of tomato or they have very good yield of onion vegetables etc other greens but they are not able to sell that produce in market nicely because in some of the areas of India mandis or you can say the markets 
and pressure markets are very far away from those rural areas and the transportation costs are very huge and in many cases they don't have any means of transportation also they carry their loads of produce in bullock carts or other animal uh, driven carts etc so it makes it very difficult for them to sell their produce at right price at right places so market facilities are very low in rural areas then emerging challenges these were the challenges which indian agriculture or farmers have been facing since independence and before that even but what are emerging emerging challenges means that nowadays what are the challenges the need for diversification of productive activities and the need for organic farming diversification of productive activity activities what are they see in agriculture sector there is farming that is the basic thing that we can do in agriculture fields but we have uh, many types of works that like in dairy farms you can uh, get employment or you can open some uh, uh, vegetable shops or processing units you can set up or juice factories can be set up and other types of works can be done alongside just like uh, cult uh, cultivation of fishing can be done cultivation of uh, other animals can be done cattle rearing can be done animal husbandry can be done all these uh, diversification is needed in your agricultural sector in india than the need for organic farming nowadays people are very much attracted towards agricultural produce and organic produce so organic farming is gaining traction with people and it is becoming famous so now there is need for making provisions for organic farming then we have other elements of action plan what are they development of means of transport to link rural areas with urban areas so it is utmost important to link all the areas rural areas of india to urban areas so that people living in rural areas can come to cities whenever they want they can sell their produce in city markets wherever they want and wherever they want why because they can get good price of their produce and this can lead to increase in income of rural farmers and rural people and they can lead a very good life provision of power supply to rural areas in many of the villages in india still they do not have adequate amount of power supply and in some cases do not have electricity supply at all so this has to be proved and all the villages all the rural areas has to be provided with good electric power supply then permanent means of irrigation means of irrigation are still very low in rural areas in india they are dependent on monsoon and they do not have adequate channels of water irrigation that means they do not have canals they do not have other uh, motor driven irrigation facilities tubes etc so this has to be helped by the government for this sector then facilities for agricultural research agricultural research is lacking in india why because population is huge and we have huge pressure of facility uh, on facilities of india but still agricultural research is required in cases where we have typical type of soil suppose and you can grow certain crop in certain crops uh, in certain fields you can grow cotton in some other you can grow sugar cane in some other you can grow flowers so what is the kind of soil that a farmer can use for particular crops is not decided by farmers they keep on blindly farming their fields and they are not able to get the maximum produce from their farms significance of rural development bulk of indian population resides in rural areas that is one reason then indian economy cannot grow without growth of rural sector that is another reason because there will be unbalanced growth that it is needed to increase overall growth rate of indian economy and attain balanced growth of urban and rural areas just now we explained the growth rate of industrial sector or urban areas is 7 to 8% of economy but of rural areas or agricultural sector is only 2% so there is huge disparity in the growth rates of both the sectors this has to be brought at par lingering challenges lingering challenges that have been existing for long period of rural development what are they rural credit it means credit for farming for a farmers take loans from productive purposes like like purchasing the inputs what are the inputs of farming tractors threshers crusher crushers hand pumps tubes etc are all inputs for agriculture then or unproductive needs like ceremonies and personal expenses farmers do have certain personal needs they uh, undertake marriage or uh, processions of their children or they celebrate some uh, occasions so they also need expenses for them also then farmers need credit because they have small farms and low production in india farms are still scattered and of small size and that small size of farmer uh, fields farmers are not able to cultivate huge amount of grains and they are not able to sell them in market and they that's why they have 
very low level of income and that is not sufficient to fulfill all their needs of life so they have to take credit from money lenders or from other sources whichever is available that they do not produce surplus stock and are only subsistence in nature just now i explained they have very low income and that's why they normally live hand to mouth and they don't have any surplus amount of money to take care of their productive and unproductive purchases of life gestation lag between owing and harvesting is quite long owing uh, that's sowing sorry here it is not owing it's sowing s okay so sowing means just putting grains in your fields and then plants come out that is sowing okay growing plants just sowing seeds and after that a plant grows it uh, gets ripened up and then it's harvested so the gestation period it will take normally 4 to 6 months to uh, for a crop to ripen up so that is a quite long time in that duration of time people need some money for uh, certain purchases for inputs you can say for fertilizers or seeds pesticides insecticides and for that they need to take loans then they need credit for initial investment on seeds fertilizers implements and some family expenses these are the needs of farmers for which they take loans or uh, money from land uh, money landlords or money lenders then short term medium term and long term credit what are they short term credit is for inputs like seeds fertilizers pesticides and insecticides electricity bills they are raised for 6 to 12 months so what is the tenure of short term credit it is 6 to 12 months and they need for normal inputs of their agriculture then medium term credit for purchase of machinery when they need some machinery like tractors thresher crushers etc they take medium term loans for construction of fences digging wells they are raised for 12 months to 5 years so duration is 12 months to 5 years for medium term loans then long term credit for purchase of additional land carrying out permanent improvements on the existing land the period of such loans ranges between 5 to 20 years when you need additional land additional fields for your farming then you need to go for long term credit why because land is very expensive to purchase if they build house if they buy new land they need Uh, more expenses and huge amount of money and that loan can be only covered in long duration of time and that's why this is tenure is 5 to 20 years note farmers may take loans for productive and productive purposes sources of rural credit non institutional sources are conventional traditional sources from landlords money lenders or from your kinship just like brother sister neighbors or other uh, members of the village or rural area that institutional sources are modern or emerging sources like banks and other institutions non institutional sources landlords village traders money lenders these are the three important sources of non institutional rural credit in india it comprised of 93% of rural borrowing during first five year plan in india so previously people normally used to take loans from all these three sources institutional sources institutional sources became popular by 1981 The institutional sources include government and cooperative credit societies give loans to farmers commercial banks and regional rural banks give loans to farmers all these sources account for 7% of rural credit during first five year plan but now it has increased to 66% that means now institutional credit has become famous among rural areas and farmers and they are not taking loan from non institutional sources they are no longer they no longer take loans from money lenders landlords and other rural people institutional sources cooperative credit societies they provide credit guidance for farming they contribute 16 to 17% of institutional credit so credit cooperative credit societies are a huge source of loans for farmers these societies try to ensure what timely and rapid flow of credit to the farmers so cooperative societies are just meant for the help of rural people and farmers and they provide timely credit for farmers for inputs elimination of the money lenders as credit agencies see money lenders were notorious for charging exorbitant or very high rates of interest from farmers so it was very painful for the farmers to repay those loans or even repay the interest and principal amount of that loan so this all has been done away by introduction of cooperative credit societies in india and now people uh, especially the farmers in rural areas are taking loans from these cooperative credit societies and they have eradicated the prominence of money lenders from rural areas they spread credit for facilities across all regions of the country so it is being spread to all regions of country 
provision of adequate credit in areas covered by special programs of development so many special programs are introduced for upliftment of the farmers in rural areas then other institutional sources are state bank of india and other commercial banks the state bank of india was set up in 1955 with a focus on rural credit this led to nationalization of banks in 1969 so it was primarily set up for interest of your nation and it was nationalized in 1969 to provide credit to rural people and other sectors of economy for development then we have regional rural banks sbi is very important but equally important are your regional rural banks rrbs and land development banks in india rrbs and land development banks were set up to promote credit supply particularly in the remote rural areas and backward districts of india they operate at district level so rrbs are regional rural banks and district development banks are land development banks are operating in rural uh, districts and they help farmers to grow crops nicely provide them credit for uh, normal inputs of the agriculture and other expenses for farmers system of institutional credit institutional credit comprises of multi agency system we have all we have discussed that commercial banks rrbs cooperative credit societies and land development bank these are four important components and if question comes for you what are, are the uh, components of your institutional credit you can write there or what is the type of institution system of credit in india you can write there okay and explain that in detail then about national bank for agricultural and rural development this is specifically a bank meant for rural development of india nabard is an apex institution handling policy planning and operations in the field of rural credit and related economic activities it was set up in 1982 so it's the most important organization for rural credit rural development main focus of nabard you can just write them you can put them in notes and write them as it is in your exams also sab is apex agency for funding credit to institutions which provide rural credit so it's meant basically for rural credit then improve delivery of credit and train personnel what is train personnel train personnel means people who give loans to farmers they should be considerate they should be understanding because whenever farmers go to banks they are met with harsh treatment then they will not tell their problems to the personnel personnel means professionals who are acting in, uh, uh, who are active in your bank banking services or who are the people who take care of loans just like babus and clerks and all the managers etc these are personal that means uh, people who work in these institutions these are personal so trained personals has to be there who can be more considerate towards and more uh, good towards these farmers and give them loans respectfully in respectful manner then coordinate rural financing maintain license with government of india and other banks this is a basic function of this nabard then to monitor and evaluate projects refinanced by it so it refinances projects what is refinancing suppose if i have given you money for some project but that project is still not complete i will refinance that means i will give you some more money to get that project completed at lower rates of interest okay so i have given you loan three two times previously and now again a new loan that when i give you new loan that is refinancing you kudumbashree kudumbashree the poor women's bank kudumbashree was started in 1955 in kerala as a small savings bank for poor women to encourage savings why because women who live in rural areas do not have enough amount of money to save in bulk that means they don't have 10000 15000 at one go and they can invest in bank or savings bank they might have sometimes they might have 200 rupees sometimes they might have 500 rupees or 1000 rupees so whatever they can save they can invest or save in that banks in kodamishri so that is an initiative to encourage savings from rural areas poor women then we have rbi and rural credit what's the role of reserve bank of india and rural credit see rbi is what it is the apex bank which takes care of all the Uh, banking system of india so it is a custodian of all the banking system in india and all the banks short term refinance new loans with lower rates of interest i just now explained what is that firstly is for agriculture and allied activities rbi provides loans for agriculture and allied activities that is related agriculture related activities like like poultry farming animal husbandry horticulture growing plants vegetables 
uh, going for fishing, uh, uh, cultivating fish, etc. The development of cooperative credit institutions, it is responsibility of RBI. Expansion of the sources of funds for short term and long term wins of the cooperative credit system. Short term and long term means which provide for short term loans and long term loans. Provision of long term funds to bring about state partnership in cooperative credit agencies. So, cooperative credit agencies get partnership or funds from state government also. Training and professionalization of uh, cooperatives. That is very important because if your professionals, so the workers who work in banks, are not trained, they are not considered towards, they are not good towards farmers, then farmers won't be able to get loans from those banks. Conducting the rural credit service to determine the coverage of rural households by credit institutions. RBI also conducts surveys to monitor what is the amount of credit that has been given to farmers or if all the facilities are being provided to farmers or if nothing haywire or nothing wrong is going on in these corporate credit societies and other banks. Having bank branch expansion of program to provide cheaper remittance facilities for banks operating in rural areas. So they provide funds to these banks, then guidance to all concerned um, you know, on matters related to rural credit. So all the rural credit matters are taken care of by your RBI. Then we have micro credit programs and self help groups. What are self help groups? They are meant for uh, people to get self employed. How? Micro credit means giving small loans to become self employed by starting small enterprises. By taking loans, you can start your own business. Then, basically, in underdeveloped countries who are not covered by any banking system, they work on informal credit delivery system and involve minimum legal formalities. If you don't have all the legal paperwork, then also you can get loans from these uh, microfinancing schemes and organizations and you can start your own business and you can have a good livelihood. Then self-help groups, SHGs, they promote thrift or savings among households. What is thrift? Saving. You are not spending all your amount which you are earning and saving some amount and keeping it in bank or some safe place for urgencies of your life. That is thrift or savings. And they promote SSGs. What do they promote? They promote savings among rural households and mobilize to offer credit to group members. So if we have a group of 50 women, we will save our money. We will keep that with our SSG or self-help group. And when we require that money, we can withdraw money from there. Offer credit without any security at moderate rates of interest. See, what's the difference between SSG and your bank? When you go to bank, you have to give some security to the bank. Maybe the papers of your house, maybe the papers of your land. But if I don't have either of them, what will I do? I can become a member of SSG and I can take amount without any much legal formalities or security. Rural banking, a critical evaluation. It has expanded over time with nationalization of major commercial banks. In 1969, many banks in India were nationalized to provide rural credit and to function for the development of your nation. Then it led to provision of institutional credit expansion. Previously, non-institutional credits like landlords and moneylenders were very famous in rural areas and they were charging very high rates. But now, institutional credit of banks, RRBs and rural development banks are there and now people can take loan from them and fulfill the necessities of life. Then establishment of NABAD led better organization of rural credit. It is also very important. Then institutional credit has led to commercialization of agriculture. Now people can take loans, farmers can take loans and they can invest in their farms and go for commercial agriculture also. They can grow cash crops, they can buy tractors, they can buy trucks and transport their uh, food pro uh, agriculture produce to big markets and fetch good income for themselves. Then, Problem areas of institutional credit are institutional credit needs collateral or security for taking loans which leave large section of farmers. So all the farmers do not have land, all the farmers may not have a uh, house or any collateral or security to offer uh, uh, to banks to get loans. So there is a problem some case for farmers to get loans from banks then. Due to laxity in recovery of loans, default rates has rose over time. What is laxity in recovery? That means if I am a farmer. I have taken loan from bank, but I have not repaid that loan to the bank. Okay, then what will happen? There will be loss for the bank and that is creating fraud cases over time and that is increase the burden on the banking system of your nation that they have not promoted thrift. Banks, institutional banks do not 
promote thrift or savings just like your microfinancing or SSGs or self-help groups are doing. So this is a drawback with banks. They do not promote savings. They just give you loans. Then after 1991, social banking in rural areas has taken a backseat. Has led to huge deaths and suicide of farmers, especially in Andhra Pradesh and Maharashtra. Social banking has taken a backseat. Banking sector is not taking care of rural areas and that's why many farmers in Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh and elsewhere in India are committing suicides. To prove this, in recent years, all adults are encouraged to open bank accounts. Nowadays, during Modi government, financial inclusion is there and all the people are encouraged to open bank accounts. What is agricultural marketing? It includes all processes from harvesting to sale of farm produce or marketing in rural areas. When you sow seeds in your fields, and you grow crop, thereafter you cut them or harvest them and sell in market. The whole process of sowing seeds that is farming to sale of your agricultural produce of farm is called agricultural marketing. Gathering the produce after harvesting, processing the produce that is link separating the uh, from the grains. What is processing? That is separating your uh, husk from your grains or the stem from the grains. Migrating the produce according to its quality, packaging the produce according to buyer's preferences, storing the produce for future sale and selling the produce when the price is lucrative or high in the market. All comes in your agricultural market that is processing, packaging, grading, selling, storing, everything comes in your agricultural marketing. Then measures initiated by the government to improve marketing system that is we have regulated markets now in India. What do they do? There is marketing committee to regulate purchase and sale of agricultural produce. Previously, farmers used to sell wherever they got the buyers. But now we have organized markets, we have regulated markets. There is a marketing committee that gives you exact price at what price you should sell your commodity so that you may not incur losses if you are a farmer. Then provision of physical infrastructure. It includes processing, storage and transportation facilities for farmers. Then we have cooperative agriculture marketing societies. What do they do? The farmers have membership in them and gain better bargaining power. What is bargaining power? That means you have more power. If I don't want to sell my produce or farm at lower price, I will not sell. Okay, at lower price. Why? Because all the farmers are united in your cooperative agriculture societies and they can ask for better price higher price okay suppose we are 10 farmers and we have a huge produce of wheat then any company like uh, Rajdhani Atta or uh, Patanjali Atta asks for our produce we have a good amount of grain and we have good quality of food uh, food grain that is wheat then we can sell them at higher price and we can get good pro price of our produce then we have policy instruments Minimum support price, MSP, what is that? In case of any price reduction or in case of surplus production in your economy, what happens? Price of produce or food grains falls. In that case, government pro provides you minimum support price. Okay. Uh, it provides assurance to, the, assurance to the farmers that their produce would be produced, purchased by the government at the specified price which assures them of some minimum income in times of surplus harvest and price declines when price, uh, surplus harvest is there in economy when there is surplus production of food grains what happens prices fall you have more supply then prices fall automatically in that case government provides you some money so that you may not incur huge losses or complete loss maintenance of buffer stock by food corporation of india fci of india maintains huge storage of food grains in case of crop failures there in economy and people do not starve or we do not have to import food grains from other nations. So they keep storage of good amount of food grains in India. Then alternative marketing channels, array of hope, here is a heading of your book. These offer advanced payments to the farmers to supply farm produce and reduce price risk for farmers. Now our, uh, there are agencies in India which offer you advanced price. If you are a farmer, you will get some advance for your produce and then you can supply and get full amount of your price of produce. Then the states of Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan have Apni Mandi or Big Bazaar. In those uh, 
mandis and bazaars they get advance payment for the produce and they can go there and fetch good prices for themselves the state of maharashtra in pune we have hadaspur mandi in the states of andhra pradesh and telangana we have right to bazaars the state of tamil nadu has uzwahar sandis so these all are markets they are new type of new generation markets for farmers they are helping markets to have better bargaining power and get a better price for their produce of farms the shortcomings of agriculture market in india lack of transportation facilities still whatever development has been done it's so far so good but in india still there are rural areas which do not have adequate amount of marketing facilities and transportation facilities are lacking over there then four sales are there if they do not have transportation facilities where the farmers would sell their produce they will sell to the customers who ever comes in contact and it is type of forced sales okay people go to uh, farmers in uh, villages and they ask any type of price and farmers have to sell at very low price okay the numerous market changes have been uh, done lack of credit facilities are there lack of storage facilities are there in rural, uh, rural areas presence of middlemen is there still there are many middlemen which eat the cream okay they will ask the farmers to sell their produce at lower price but they themselves will sell that produce of farms at higher price to someone else so that middleman is eating away all the profit of farmers and he is the real reaper of profits or the gainer in that whole bargain or whole sale process the lack of standard weights and measures still in rural areas people use stones and bricks as weight these are called raw weight system so exact weights and standard weights are not used and and that also leads to um no decline in earning of farmers and losses for them in adequate market information people uh, living in rural areas do not have information about the uh, marketing facilities about storage facilities processing facilities that are existing in cities and that's why they have to sell their produce at lower price they do not have any information about the real price or exact price in the markets to develop rural areas agriculture diversification should be practiced and for that production of diverse variety of crops rather than specified crop to reduce market risk due to price fluctuations and failure of monsoon should be cultivated why because if you produce all the farmers produce a single type of crop then what will happen there will be surplus production that happened like in india before 2 3 months tomatoes were really produced in bulk they were in surplus production and that's why their prices declined and afterwards farmers got irritated and they destroyed whatever production was done and now tomatoes have become expensive so this is a condition that may happen due to your over production of same type of crop and if all the farmers in india grow wheat who will grow rice and very few farmers will grow rice and in that case rice will become really very expensive and wheat will become cheap and cheaper day by day so what will happen producers who will produce or farmers who will produce wheat will Uh, have losses so to avoid this condition all the crops should be grown in different quantities and requisite amount of quantity should be grown diversification of production activity it is employment this includes shift from crop farming to other production uh, as suited by environment and soil type increase to increase income and employment so apart from agriculture farmers in uh, rural areas should practice other professions also and other values of employment should be looked after emerging challenges of rural development diversification of crop production diversification of production activity and employment and organic farming they are the emerging challenges let's discuss them here we have animal husbandry or livestock farming what is that it includes poultry cattle and goat sheep rearing that means you grow a uh, chicken you uh, take care of cattle you grow cattle and goats and sheep etc in this it is important source of employment for people in india that due to operation flood production of milk has increased in addition production of meat eggs wool and other production has also increased so this is diversification of your employment in rural areas then problems low productivity due to lower rate of know how in animal husbandry what is the main problem there is low productivity due to low low rate of know how people do not know what type of animals they should uh, rear what type of animals they should have in india and who will fetch them good income what type of sheep or uh, goats they should rear they do not have that knowledge and what is the 
proper process of taking care of these animals and cattle etc they do not know and that's why they incur losses the deficient veterinary care hospitals are not there for animals and other facilities are not there for animals has been in india then diversification here for fisheries and aquaculture west bengal andhra pradesh kerala maharashtra gujarat and tamil nadu have large scale fisheries in india is done, fishing is done on inland sources and rivers the rivers lakes ponds and streams we have inland that means those are present in different states it, it is not marine or sea source they are away from sea in rivers you grow fish in lakes ponds and streams etc in marine so that means sea areas or marine areas we have seas and oceans are important sources of growing fishes in india then however fishing committee is one of the most backward committees of india due to low literacy low finance low technical know how overfishing and pollution of water bodies so these are all the problems which fishing people or our fishing committee in india faces they have low technical know how no money no know how and no better living standard and they are in a very lurchy situation suggestions to reduce widespread indebtedness of these fishing people credit to break vicious cycle of indebtedness that means if they are having debt from banks that should uh, government should do something to provide them loans and improve their living standard and know how so that they can do fishing on uh, commercialize and improve their profit margins then microfinancing through sgs for marginal fishing families self help group should be promoted in these areas so that they can uh, provide uh, loan to them finance to them and promote uh, mobility mo uh, mobilization of funds and savings etc then application of fishing technology technology of fishing should be improved and it should be provided to uh, fishing people so that they can make optimum use of that and increase their production and employment and profit then we have horticulture it is a branch of plant agriculture where you grow vegetables fruits and other uh, ornamental plants that means uh, decorative plants we have it is a branch of plant agriculture that deals with garden crops generally fruits vegetables and ornamental plants or flowers and creepers and other show plants which you keep in your homes just like aloe vera plants there's a snake plants or other many creepers roses tulsi anything okay it is emerged as important means of sustainable living in rural areas by increasing income level of farmers your fruits are grown in horticultural farms your vegetables are grown there tomatoes which other uh, ornamental plants everything is grown there drawback of horticulture in india the bulk of land under pulses cultivation has been taken up for horticulture which has reduced pulses cultivation and increased price of pulses you know pulses all the dals in india let's say urad dal arad dal moong dal tuwar dal everything the area which was under this dal cultivation the pulses cultivation has been taken away for this horticulture and that is a drawback major drawback why because now farmers are not growing pulses and they are growing this horticultural commodity uh, products so what is happening pulses are growing in lesser amount and that is why people are not getting pulses at lower price and price of pulses are skyrocketing and poor people do not get to eat these pulses or consume them and that's why they are fighting the deficiency of protein in their diets tanba tanba tamil nadu women in agriculture it is a project launched in tamil nadu to train women in diverse techniques of production to increase women employment to increase the employment of women people in tamil nadu are being trained in farming techniques that it functions like self help groups and promote cottage and household production activity by using their own pool of funds so here we have a self help group that was a type of self help group which uh, takes funds from these women collects it and then it provide to its members for opening some cottage industry or small scale industry so that women can develop and get employment and produce and sell in the market then we have golden revolution and green revolution what is the difference golden revolution it refers to services of research development and technology transfer initiatives that increase production of horticultural crops like plant vegetables food sector crop then vegetables fruits and honey etc grew in large amounts high crop productivity led to golden revolution in horticultural farming during the years 1991 to 2012 so this is your golden revolution of horticulture honey fruits vegetables etc now green revolution what is that 
it refers to a revolutionary rise in crop production owing to HYV that is high yielding variety of seeds which we studied earlier also that is HYV technology and chemical inputs of farming that is fertilizers, pesticides and insecticides. When we use all these farming inputs in our farms we increased our crop production our food grain production manifold and that was known as green revolution because green refers to your uh, food grains etc. Then we have information technology, IT as an option of livelihoods in rural areas. Digital revolution is spreading everywhere in rural areas also and internet in India is growing like crazy. So IT is also offering some of the solutions to rural areas. People out there can find uh, employment in this IT as well. So what is happening? IT revolution is promoting Indian economy as a knowledge economy. More and more people are hired by other nations in business process, outsourcing, knowledge process, outsourcing from India. So IT is developing like anything in India. It highlights the significance of human capital as important determinant of growth. So here in India, we have demographic dividend and India is having large number of people who are in their working age group, the largest in the whole uh, world you can say. So India is the youngest nation of the world and people of it can be used in different employments and IT is also a very good option for them and that's why human capital is regarded as a major determinant of growth in India. Its knowledge economy will spread in rural areas, increase livelihood options in rural areas as well. It is used to predict prices, weather and soil conditions in rural areas. See, nowadays we have many apps which are on internet which can predict the type of weather you are having, whether you will, uh, it will rain tomorrow, it will be a sunny day or cloudy day tomorrow, whatever soil is there uh, in particular field or farm, it all can be determined with the help of internet and that is spreading in rural areas. The Damshedji Tata National Virtual Academy for Rural Prosperity is imparting operational training for nearly 10 lakh rural people through info kiosks which have computers, scanners, printers and photocopies. Copier. That means it's a one spot solution for all these type of facilities like computer operations, scanners, printers and photocopiers etc. And that will help these uh, people in rural areas to generate income for themselves by providing these facilities to people living out there. The kiosk help in emailing, video conferencing and transfer of documents to different places. And for that, the people who have these kiosks, charge money from people who want to use them and earn livelihood for them. The owner of these kiosks can sell these services and earn living. Organic farming. Organic farming is an agricultural process that uses biological fertilizers and pest control methods and means derived from animal and plant based. Simple. When you have compost manure, just like you throw all the leaves, cow dung and all the uh, waste that is for peelings of fruits and vegetables etc. And but make compost of that by keeping earthworms in that or by any other way you decompose that whole material and it becomes fertilizer and when you use this type of fertilizer that is organic fertilizer and when you cultivate your farm with the help of this organic fertilizer it is known as organic farming simple this is becoming really famous among people we all demand organic produce now and now more and more cultivation is using your organic fertilizers and pesticides of organic origin. In this type of farming animal manures and compost are basic inputs and it does not use chemical inputs like fertilizers, insects and pesticides or manufactured in your factories but which is manufactured in your farms or in agricultural lands in your rural areas. It is done to manage ecological balance and lead sustainable development. Now, organic producers are used, organic uh, fertilizer is being used, organic pesticide is being used and no factory made chemical fertilizer is used in your organic farming. So it is all organic, it is all plant and manure based fertilizer and insects and pesticides. Why organic farming? Discards the use of non-renewable resources, then environment friendly, then sustains soil fertility healthier and tastier food, inexpensive technology for the small and marginal farmers. So organic farmers or has all these benefits, it's environment friendly, the food grown by it is healthier and tastier and it provides uh, for farmers, it provides help to the farmers because they don't uh, have money, they don't have enough credit to buy chemical fertilizers from market and now when they use organic fertilizers, it is 
of their own because they have animals they can use their cow dung and buffalo dung for making that compost and they can use their own home grown fertilizers or field grown fertilizers for their farming so it is very good for them so this is all about your chapter 6 part 2 has been completed and part 1 also has been uploaded previously so now what you have to do you need to just look for all these notes understand them and these notes can exactly be used for exams also all these notes are sufficient you can add one or two two lines in your detailed air um, answers and that is enough and sufficient for you so thank you so much take care god bless you study hard and progress well for the progress of your self and your nation as well thank you so much